everybody, it's Jeff Antoniak. Welcome to Digging Deeper Jazz. Today, I wanna to talk about a very cool scale I've been working on, the Coltrane Minor Pentatonic. Some of you may have noticed that this is video number 199. Oh my God. Yes, we're calling it quits after 200 of the Digging Deeper videos. This is the second last one. The last one is next week, but here's the thing last one of the series. Right after that, we're gonna keep going on Friday afternoons as we have been for years. We're gonna do a couple cool in-between episodes, including a uh, live chat with you guys. It's gonna be live streamed here on YouTube. And uh, then we're starting a brand new series on April 30th, 2021 called J&J &J on Jazz. I'm one of the J's. We got a different J who's coming in and is gonna be uh, my partner in the next series. So that's pretty exciting. Um, and those of you who have been sending in emails to get the free trial for Jazzwire, keep sending those in. If you've sent one in, your code is coming to you. We're building that on the Jazzwire site and you're gonna be able to come in and get a free one week uh, trial of Jazzwire. See what's really going on inside there. You guys have been watching these videos for a long time. It's time to jump and really do some powerful playing. Okay, so let's dig into this Coltrane minor pentatonic stuff. Now, um, we all know the major pentatonic and the minor pentatonic. Well, those pentatonics got in kind of early on it, I think, and they hired good publicists, and um, everybody just knows those two pentatonics. There's so many other pentatonics. Let me play some of these things for you. Here's the major pentatonic scale that we all know and love. We know that one, major pentatonic. So the minor pentatonic, number two on the sheet. All right, so you know the minor pentatonic. Now, they're called pentatonic scales, why? Penta means five, yes it does. So there are five notes in these scales. Uh, each of them has a slightly different recipe, which you saw on the sheet. Now, there are many, many, many groupings of five notes that will make a pentatonic scale. There are lots of them. And they each have a different sound, a different flavor, and all sorts of different applications. So here's one that some people call the Coltrane Minor Pentatonic. It's one, two, flat, three, five, six. It's like the major pentatonic, but with a flat third. <laughs> Okay, one of many minor pentatonic scales. This one has some very cool applications. So why am I doing this as the second last Digging Deeper uh, video? People have been asking me, what are you practicing? Well, this is a sound that I'm actually dedicating pretty much the next year to. I really wanna get this sound going and all of the applications for it. So now, here's a thought. For most of you out there, the thousands and thousands and thousands that are gonna see this video, this is probably not the best thing for you to be practicing. Um, I wanna share it with you. Is, is it so hard that you can't play it? Of course not, it's five notes. You can all play that. Um, the deal is with the time you have to spend, this is almost certainly not what you should be practicing. And that is the importance and that's the big news about Jazzwire. I don't know your playing. This may get you excited, but is it the best thing for you to be working on? Probably not. There are so many more things that will get you so much further down the road. So this may be cool, it may get you excited, but is it gonna get you better quicker? That's all I care about as a coach and as a teacher, better quicker. So for a lot of us, this isn't the thing. Now, of course, I don't know you're playing, right? I'm gonna present this on YouTube, whatever happens, happens. Inside Jazzwire, I get to pick and choose who gets which information when. That's called actual teaching. <laughs> okay, so let's get into this thing. So pentatonic patterns, and certainly this Coltrane pentatonic, the real value and power of these things is when we get into patterns. Patterns are really interesting with pentatonics because they sound, there's a nice organization there, but because of the skips in the pentatonic scale, we get some pretty interesting sounds that come out that we probably wouldn't discover if we didn't apply these patterns. So let me play the pattern that's uh, number four on the sheet for you. 
All right, it's a pretty great sound. So that Coltrane minor pentatonic, that particular collection of notes, it's certainly minor and it has a nice bright sound because of the sixth scale degree that's in there and also the ninth. Now it's a minor pentatonic, so we can probably put two and two together. This might be a cool sound to use on a minor chord and that is true. So let me uh, just play it for you over a minor tonality. I'll play it ascending the way it's written out. I'll play it descending. I'll play some other sounds uh, with the scale for you. And maybe I'm thinking about playing the song So What by, uh, by Miles Davis. So just sort of a modal backing track playing C minor. Here we go. All that playing that I did for you, I made almost no decisions. <laughs> so, uh, was th does that count as jazz? Can you charge for that? Yes, indeed, you can. Um, I start a pattern and there it goes, right? So there's a lot of art, there's a lot of design that happens with patterns. And after you make two or three decisions about where this board goes and where that board goes, now you follow the pattern. And something really interesting and beautiful might come out of it, right? So that's what's happening here. So that this is how some of the great, great, great players can play so much music. And you're thinking to yourself, are they deciding every note? How are they doing that? So the answer is no. Often they're deciding a shape or an architecture. Or what am I gonna put over top of this? and then it goes. So it's very interesting. This is super powerful stuff, super powerful stuff. And as I said at the beginning, is there anything about this pattern you don't understand? Not a thing. Is there anything about these five notes? No. Is this sound exactly what you need in your playing today? Probably not. That's the kind of guidance that I'm talking about that we all need, that guidance of what is best for me today. That's what we do at Jazzwire, and that's why I want you to uh, sign up for that free trial. Okay, so one last little thing before we take off today, and this is where this scale goes nuts. You remember earlier I said I'm spending this year on the scale? What is up with that? Where is there a year worth of practice, even in all 12 keys for this? Here's where it gets interesting. You can use that exact scale in the key of C over five or six or seven or eight different chords. Okay, so it gets a little mind bending here. Check it out. In the last example on the page, I'm gonna keep playing this C scale, but instead of playing it over C minor, I'm gonna be playing that C minor scale over a B dominant chord, a B7 altered. Turns out playing th that grouping in C minor is a really nice sound over a B altered. So that's what I wanna do for you on the way out. Let me, let me play this for you. So here's what I'm gonna do on the backing track. I'm gonna play two measures of B7, two measures of E minor concert. And just so you can hear that five chord, the dominant, and it's gonna resolve. You can hear the dominant, it's gonna resolve. And so I'll start out playing simply. I won't use the scale to begin with, just to get your ear tonicized so you can hear the key we're in. Then what I'm gonna do is start playing these exact same patterns in the key of C minor as the accompaniment's playing B altered. And you're gonna hear it sounds pretty awesome. Check this out. So what about that? Now that's pretty awesome, right? I use the C minor, Coltrane minor pentatonic, I use that sound over C minor. 
Cool. C minor equals C minor. You got it. Here's the interesting part. C minor equals B altered. Okay, so this is polytonality. This is a way to get to the B altered scale. There's so many ways to think about this. And this is, this is a shadow of what this scale can do as we take it over a half diminished chord, over a sus chord, over a diatonic dom dominant chord, over a major chord. There are so many places to use this. This is a year of work. Here's the thing. I played jazz for about 40 years and I've been just fine without this scale for 40 out of those 40 years. So is it a required scale? No. Did Lester Young use this scale? Probably not. I haven't asked him, but I'm gonna guess probably not. So, um, yeah, so that's why this isn't necessary and that's why this may or may not be for you. So I'm not trying to scare you away from playing it, but I'm trying to give you this sense that just because a guy, good looking though he may be, on YouTube, shows you something does not mean you should drop everything and do that. That's why you need a coach. Give us an email and uh, we'll gift you a free trial of Jazzwire. You can see what I'm talking about. All right, enjoy this. I'm gonna see you next week for the last Digging Deeper episode. And then after that, we're gonna have a couple weeks where we're gonna do some live stream stuff. Uh, I'm gonna do sort of the best of. I'm gonna go back and review some of the most important videos of the last 200. And then we're gonna get into J and J on Jazz. All right, let me do some plan for you.